It's another amazing edition of Wardy Screencast. Continuing with nonfiction, today we're going to get into nonfiction reading signposts, things you can look for when reading nonfiction, which will help you, in this case today, make inferences, draw conclusions. Uh, we're going to focus on numbers and statistics today. Give you an overview of the five reading signposts, but really focus on numbers and statistics. So let's get into it. So here's the signposts we're going to be going over the next cycle or so. Numbers and stats, quoted words, contrasts and contradictions, extreme or absolute language, and word gaps. All right, so what I want you to do is write down a heading in your notes, continue on after the three questions that we have, uh, what surprised you, what's the author think we already knew, and what challenge changed or confirmed what I thought I knew. So you're going to continue after that and write down nonfiction reading signposts and label it numbers and statistics. Numbers and stats. Write this down. Note specific numbers, number words, or amounts. Then, when you see it, ask yourself why did the author use these numbers or amounts? Alright, so why did the author use these numbers or amounts? I also want to write this down. When you see a number, it'll help you visualize the writer's point make an inference, compare and contrast, draw conclusions, or identify any writer bias that might exist. So let me write these down too. All right, for example, we have a couple more we'll do together. This will be the last thing I show you. So from Garana's story by Paige Kent. It says, Garana and her family have lived in their one-room house for two years. It's one of thousands of mud brick homes in the Shamshatu Afghan camp camp holds about 50,000 Afghan refugees. So let's see, we have a one-room house, thousands of mud brick homes, camp holds 50,000 refugees. So I'm picturing that this really, if I go back to this, it's probably really visualizing what the writer's trying to tell us. You know, I can picture, all right, a one-room house for an entire family. Kind of like Martin Gonda in I Will Always Write Back. Mud brick homes, probably not all that great built. You know, it sounds more like shacks to me. And there's 50,000 Afghan refugees together, so I can start to picture what that looks like. All right, so we're going to work more with uh, numbers and stats and making some inferences, drawing conclusions in a little bit. Wardy is out 